The Reedy Set Grow Podcast with Trish Reedy. Welcome to Reedy Set Grow, the podcast that inspires you to grow into the person you are meant to be. I'm your host, Trish Reedy. I'm a local mortgage lender here, and I love our community. So I wanted to bring to you, our listeners, some of the most inspiring people in our community. Today, we have Jason Witt, who I know from the gym. However, Jason is a UFC fighter. And he just won this big, big fight. I almost called it a race because I'm a runner, <laughs> but it's a fight. Jason, tell, well, me mostly because I'm not really into UFC. I did watch you fight. It was kind of scary to me. Tell me more just kind of about the basics. Obviously, a lot of people know, but give those of us that don't kind of the rundown. Uh, yeah, so um, the UFC is kind of the NFL of mixed martial arts. Um, the UFC, it's uh, the the rundown is you have three five minute rounds. Um, it's it's uh, mixed martial arts is it's a mixture of all kinds of martial arts. You have jujitsu, you have wrestling, you have boxing, you have kickboxing, you have uh, all the martial arts mixed together. Um, back in about 1991, um, the UFC came about and they they made a fight. They wanted to see who the best style of martial arts was. And they had fights like that. And then over the years, it's evolved into more of a sport. And nowadays, it's, it's, uh, it's a lot of the sports are just really mixed together really well. It's blended really well. Um, so, so for me, uh, it's a three five-minute rounds um, where I go in and fight another man with four-ounce gloves on. And whoever comes out, uh, the better man is the winner. So. And that feels pretty good, doesn't it? To be the oh, it feels fantastic. There's uh, there is there's no feeling quite like it. Uh, it's it's hard to compare to uh, it's hard to compare to anything. Um, the level of stress, the level of commitment it takes to uh, to win a UFC fight is definitely it's uh, it's definitely one of the top things in my life. That's awesome. So so that you said this is like the NFL for for mixed martial arts. So yep. this is not WWF WWE Hulk Hogan playing around. This is legit fighting. Yeah, so the WWE is kind of uh, I, I call it stage wrestling. It's not it's not real uh, real wrestling. Uh, mixed martial arts is definitely real. Um, there's there's no stunts. There's no scripts. It's it's one man goes in the cage against another man. Whoever comes out is the is a better man that day. Um, yeah, in my in my fight, I cut him open, and they said this is not a prop. It was on Halloween. The guy was bleeding everywhere, and uh, yeah, I, I cut him open pretty well. And that's you know that's that's just part of the game. Um, but yeah, it's definitely, it's a violent sport. Um, it's, it's, I'm going in there to hurt you. You're coming in there to hurt me and whoever comes out wins. And now is this something you've always wanted to do? What's your journey been to get to this level? Yeah, that's a good question. Um, so like most people wrestled or did, did some form of mixed martial arts when they were younger. Um, I wasn't like that. I skateboarded back when I was younger. Uh, I still love skateboarding this day. Um, my family, my uncle used to be a professional kickboxer and boxer and he kind of, he kind of helped me start training. I started, I found a gym that I really loved. Um, I always, I'm a very competitive person. I never wanted to, um, I don't, I, I don't like hurting people. I'm not a violent person, but I love competition. And that's kind of what mixed martial arts really is the ultimate form of competition. Um, I started training for about six weeks when I was about 21, 22, took a, took a uh, mixed martial arts fight. And at 21 and 22, I was a, I was a cocky kid. Uh, didn't think I could really get beat by anybody. Uh, I found out real quick, the hard way that, uh, I could lose. <laughs> and I'm the type of person that, uh, when, when I lose, I come back better. Like I'm going to figure out why I lost. How do I get better? And from a little that bit of fight that on, fail really... forward attitude, fail forward. Yeah. 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 And that's, that's, that's definitely the attitude I have. Um, I lost that fight and I just kept training harder and harder and I, I got a lot better. And then I just kind of fell in love with the sport from that and then just kept going. And it's, it's turned into a journey that I never thought would even play out the way it has. Yeah. That's amazing. That's amazing. So explain what's the levels. Like you, obviously it took a while to get to the, this, to the big yeah. stage, right? Give me, give yeah, me a little bit more of the journey from that first 22 year old cocky kid. <laughs> Uh, there's a lot of levels to it. So, so you have amateurs. Um, so think of that, like kind of like Pee Wee. I'm going to use football references. Think of that like Pee Wee football, uh, middle school football, things like that. Um, then you have kind of like when you turn pro, that's kind of like, uh, you have local pro shows, uh, pro just means you get paid for it. So you have amateurs, which you fight and you just get your, your record up. Um, you don't, you don't get paid for that. Um, so you pretty much do it. You fight people for free, you get beat up for free. 
It's a terrible idea. Don't <laughs> <do>. <laughs> uh, and then you have, when you turn pro, you start getting paid. You don't make a lot of money. I think my first fight, I made 300 and 300. So 300 to make weight, 300 to win. Uh, not, you can't make a living off that either. Um, so think of that like high school football, right? And then when you get better as a pro, you have bigger shows like LFA, uh, RFA back in the day. You have local shows like FAC. Uh, it's a local one in Kansas City. Mm -hmm. um, that's kind of like like you're you're in college, right? Like you're a freshman in college, and then you get to the point where where you you keep fighting, and you're you're almost to the UFC. So like you're almost there. Like you're a first round draft pick, mm -hmm. right? And then when you get in the UFC, you're in the NFL. That's kind of that's kind of uh, like that's that's the the highest level of the sport. That's where you want to be. That's the toughest competition. And from then on, you just kind of keep moving up. Like, let's, you know, you keep moving up. You're in the playoffs. Oh, cool. You lose, then you come back and try to win the Super Bowl. The, the UFC championships, like, win the Super Bowl. Yeah, awesome. So tell me a little bit about who's, who's the Patrick Mahomes of your sport? Who, who do you really look up to? Who inspires you? Uh, Is that the goal for you? Do you want to be the the Patrick Mahomes of UFC? Uh, I, I never thought about it that way. Uh, I always thought I just want to be in the UFC and want to have a successful career in the UFC. I never said I wanted to be a UFC champion. I never said I wanted to be. There's The thing about that is is there's a lot of Patrick Mahomes in the UFC. There's a lot of breakout stars. Uh, you got Hamza Shemaev is is just coming up. He's a crazy star. Uh, Israel Adesanya is is a UFC champion, 185 pounds. And they're kind of the, the Patrick Mahomes uh, of the sport. They're, they're flashy. They're they're fantastic fighters. They make a damn good living doing this too. So, uh, as, as does Patrick Mahomes making $503 million. That's right, insane. Right. Um, but yeah, there's, there's, I mean, there's, there's a lot of, there's a lot of guys coming up like Patrick Mahomes, uh, in the UFC. That's awesome. So this is not your only gig, right? You don't just fight for a living. Tell us a little bit about what else you do. Yeah. So, um, about five years ago, four years ago, I was working for an ice company. Uh, I drove a truck around delivering ice. Uh, I still trained full time too. Uh, I hated it. I just didn't, didn't, didn't enjoy my life. Um, so I told my wife, I was like, Hey, I love, I love lifting weights. I love personal training. I love helping people through fitness. Mm -hmm. and I said, Hey, look, I want to quit my job. Um, I'll drive for Uber for a couple months while I get sort of certified as a personal trainer. Um, and then, you know, if I don't pass, then I'll do whatever you need me to do to make money for the family. Like that's, that's fine with me. And if I do, I'm going to get a job, become a personal trainer. Uh, so I did that. Um, that was actually four years ago, almost to the date. Um, so I did that, became a personal trainer, worked at a corporate gym, uh, for about two or three years. And then I kind of went off on my own, uh, became a personal trainer, uh, my own, uh, independent contractor pretty much. Right. And then during quarantine, uh, it really, you know, we, we, we were deemed unessential, which, so I didn't have a job for two months and I'm like, man, this is, this is not good. How can I kind of fix this? Right. And so to fix that, I bought the, I bought the business. So I bought the gym. Um, I spent, uh, like a week or two in quarantine. Uh, the gym wasn't open yet. So we renovated the place. We painted all the walls. Um, I don't know if you were there and remember what it looked like before I took over. Uh, walls were orange. It was gray. There's a couple walls. I took everything down. Uh, my wife was a huge help with that. She, she painted a lot of the walls, decorated most of the place. So that's took down some walls, redid a lot of the stuff, um, really reinvented the whole entire place. We call it, uh, it's called fit house KC and we've kind of owned that place, uh, for was that four or five months now. Yeah. And so I'm pretty happy with, with the business. It, it, it's, it was something that I wanted to do when I first became a personal trainer. I was like, look, I kind of want to own my own gym. I think that'd be cool. Um, so that's just what, what we're doing now, just kind of running with that. So Yeah, I feel like it's got a great atmosphere. You know, there, people are in there, they're working hard, but they're still competitive and kind of fighting each other to, to lift the most and be the best and get the best workout in. Yeah. It's a great yeah, that's atmosphere. Kind of a, uh, that's, the, that's the culture I wanted. I wanted. It's called Fit House KC because it's kind of like a home away from home. Um, I have little boot camps. Uh, that run in the morning and they're very competitive. They like lifting heavy and, and that's, that's the culture I want in the gym. I want everybody to feel comfortable in the house or in the, in the house too. Yeah. Uh, I want everybody to feel comfortable in the gym. I want, I want a great atmosphere. And I think that, that really changed once I took over. Yeah, for sure. So what's it feel like to get punched in the face by some other guy? Like you are a ripped guy <laughs> and what, I mean, I can't you. even imagine. What does that feel like? Uh, when you're in the fight, it doesn't hurt at all. It's you, you know, it's it's just pressure. You feel pressure like 
being put on your face. Um, getting punched in the face, not fun. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna lie to you. It, it, it does like when you're in sparring and stuff like that. It does hurt. It doesn't feel good. Um, yeah, it's just, it's, it, it feels like losing, and I hate losing. That's, that's the, that's kind of how I, I, I picture it. And I, when I get hit in the face, I get a little angry. And I know that's not a good thing, but it's definitely got a lot of whatever the years. Um, yeah, it's, it's not fun. It's, it's, <laughs> I can't imagine it's not, it would it, be. It, it, it's painful. You know, even, even this last fight that I just had, um, I won the fight. I didn't get hit. I didn't get punched. But uh, even, even elbowing the guy in the face and kicking the guy, my, my knees hurt, my elbows hurt. Like, it's just, you still get beat up even though you beat the other guy up. Yeah. Man. So have you had any, like, legit injuries? <laughs> Any, any big things to overcome with that? Or have you been lucky? Um, you know, nothing, nothing crazy. I got my eyes split open a couple of times. I'm missing a couple of teeth. Nothing, nothing, nothing too, <laughs> Just some uh, too teeth. crazy. Nobody nothing. needs those anyways. I mean, my seven year old's no, missing teeth right now, but it's a little different yeah, it's, story. It's, it's yeah. no big deal. Uh, <laughs> no, no broken bones. I think I broke my hand once, but that wasn't even, that was fighting some kid a long time ago. That wasn't even uh, part of fighting, but yeah, nothing, <laughs> no big injuries. Fortunately, I'm going to keep it that way. We're going to knock on some wood for you. So what's it feel like the day after a fight? Do you have like an adrenaline high where you're like, oh, this was great. I won. I kicked ass. Or is it more of an adrenaline <laughs> dump? No. So like, I, I don't ever sleep the night after a fight ever. Like, uh, and this is going to sound funny. Most people are like, oh, he's probably out partying. He's probably out drinking, doing getting crazy. No, I was in bed by eight o'clock. It was Vegas time. I was in bed by eight o'clock. Couldn't sleep. I just sat there and stared at the ceiling for eight hours decided to get my flight the next morning. But yeah, it's uh, the, the the adrenaline dump. It's 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 crazy. You you you're so hyped. You're so proud of yourself. Like I can't put that into words either. It's just it's hard to explain. Um, but yeah, once once you get done, you just sit down. And you're just like you kind of reevaluate what you've done. Uh, kind of for me, I, I like to go back. Even though I won the fight, I did a great job. I didn't get hit, but I want to go back and understand what I could have done better. Like mm. for me, it's just to be a consistent student of the game, to understand even if you're winning, how do I how do I get better? How do I consistently get better over time? This isn't gonna be my last fight. It's not gonna be the last time I perform. So I wanna know what I could have done better even, even in the best circumstances. Yeah, so earlier we heard fail forward and now we definitely are hearing about this growth mindset. I imagine that yeah. has really helped with your success. Absolutely. Um, I wasn't always like this way. I, don't, I wasn't always like a super strong minded person. Um, and that, that's just come over with time and putting the right people in my life. Um, they say, hang out with five millionaires, you'll be the six, you know, hang out with five homeless people, you'll be the six. It's, it's who you hang out with, who you surround yourself with. Mm -hmm. um, and I really found, I really found a home at Glory MMA and Fitness uh, back in Kansas City, at least in Missouri. Um, and James Krause, he's a, he's a phenomenal coach. I've, I've talked about him quite a bit. Um, he really kind of set me up to, to build my own success. Um, we talk a lot about um, like reading books and listening to things. Uh, the first like audio book I ever really listened to or video I watched was uh, The Secret. And I don't know if you ever heard of that oh. or read that. Please check that out. It's The Secret. You can find it on YouTube. Um, it's just talking about positive affirmations and, and positive thoughts. Thoughts become things. Like what, what you put out in the universe mm -hmm. is really comes what comes back, back to you. you. So whether that's whether that's whether that's if you put negative stuff on the universe, it's going to come back to you that way too. Um, so that's really helped change my life in terms of my mindset towards uh, towards business, towards life, towards uh, fighting, towards everything. I mean, it really mm -hmm. it's really a game changer in my opinion. Yeah, I found that to be totally true in my business. When I put out that energy that I want to do work, I want to help people, mm -hmm. it comes back. It definitely comes back. For sure. Uh, and it's, a, it's a constant, it's a constant work. It's not just like, Oh, I say one thing you like, if you say, I want to make a million dollars and you do nothing to make that million dollars, it's not going to come true. You still have to put in the work, but right. continuing to tell yourself that this is, this is what I want to do. This is how, and that's kind of how I made the UFC. There's a lot of times that, that I was, uh, I was like, man, I'm never going to make it. It's, 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 it's hard. Like I, I, I'd be up six fight win streak and then I'd lose a fight and then I'm like, man, I'm back down in the middle again, but you just, staying consistent with your positive thoughts and keep pushing forward. Got to have that good mindset for sure. Um, so you are a welterweight to my, to my understanding. Tell us, tell me what that means yes. and what's the like range. Where do you have to be to be in that category? Yeah. Um, so to be a welterweight, it's 170 pounds. So you have, you have, uh, in UFC, you have weight class. You have 125, you have 135, 145, 155, 170, 185, 205, and then you have heavyweight. Okay. 
Okay. So welterweight is 170. So you have to make weight, you have to be 170. You get one pound allowance. So I made we can 170. Be 170. Yeah. So you'd be 171. Um, so that's that's welterweight. Then you go. Then you have a 15 pound increment uh, to 185. Then you have 15 pounds down to get to 155. So you going to be in that in that weight range. So what's it like to have to cut weight? <laughs> Being at 170, it's it's not a bad weight cut for me. It's uh, it's you know usually it's gonna be hard to explain, but a lot of people cut a lot of weight. For one, for fighting at 170, I only cut like 15 pounds, so I walk around like 185, which I know sounds like a lot, but in our sport, it's it's done really well. Um, we kind of have a science behind getting down to it and the the most healthy way to do it. Um, but yeah, it's it's rough. It's terrible. It's you're dehydrating yourself. You're you're water loading. You're not eating as a lot of calories you're not doing a lot of stuff you normally would um but it's rough and how long it's, does it take to cut those 15 pounds so i'll start uh i start sunday okay i'll be about 185 and then so i start sunday i cut i cut all sodium meaning i don't i don't add sodium to anything i don't have a lot of sodium in my body and then i drink two gallons of water uh each day till thursday so from sunday to wednesday i'll drink two gallons of water a day kind of flush my system out mm -hmm. on thursday i will I would drink one gallon of water till noon, eat a little bit, and then Thursday night, I'll go sit in a hot tub for an hour to an hour and a half, depending on how I feel, how how much I have to lose. Sounds relaxing. Um, that right? It's it's really not. I promise you that <laughs> it's really not. It's it's absolutely terrible. Um, but it gets the water off. Uh, you're just trying to like lose water weight, pretty much. Like because you you've hydrated so much, mm -hmm. they're trying to dehydrate yourself a little bit. Okay, so I'll start it like. Like from Sunday to Wednesday, I'll probably lose four to five pounds just in sodium and flushing my body out. So I'll probably I'll probably weigh about let's say 180, um, like that Thursday, and then that Thursday I'll cut about six pounds in an hour, hour and a half just of losing water out of the hot tub because it heats your body up, makes you sweat quite a bit. And then the next day, like I'll go to sleep. Next day I'll wake up three or four pounds over, and I'll cut those three or four pounds. And then that day I make weight. So about 9 a.m. I make weight. After I make weight, I can eat, drink, whatever I need to to rehydrate, uh, like nutri mm -hmm. nutrients back in my body, mm -hmm. do whatever I need to get back up. And so I'll weigh in Friday at 170, 170.5, somewhere around there. And then when I walk into the cage on Saturday, I'll, I think I walked in about 190. So wow. I put on about 20 pounds back on. Yeah. Wow. Man. It's pretty crazy. That's intense. It's I mean, not, the whole sport is healthy, intense. But, yeah, the whole the whole sport is crazy. In yeah, general. what's what's your wife think about this? I mean, to, when I think about if if my husband were to do this, <laughs> I would be scared for him all the time, and I wouldn't want to want have my kids watch. I wouldn't want to yeah. have my kids see their dad get in a fight. I don't know. Tell uh, me, tell me what it's like for your family. So when I first started fighting, I told my mom, I was like, "Look, look, I want to fight," and she's like, "Look, if you fight or get a tattoo, I will kick you out of the house." I said, "That's cool." I don't have a tattoo, but I have a fight next week. Uh, <laughs> didn't kick me out of the house. Uh, my mom, my mom hates the idea of me fighting. She, 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 she doesn't like it. But she went to practice with me one time. She's like, I saw how much you love this. I see that this is what you do. She knows I'm athletic. She knows I love being competitive. Mm -hmm. So she's been like my biggest supporter. She's been to every single fight. She drove to Chicago to watch me fight. She goes to everything. She's extremely uh, intoxicated when she does it. She's. Uh, <laughs> Especially the first mom's got to do what a mom's fights. got to do. Hey, you gotta do what you gotta do. Uh, she was, she was drinking quite a bit for the first couple of fights. She does it sober now. So she's, <laughs> she's gotten used to it. She, she can do it a lot better now. My wife, when I met my wife, we met at an MMA gym. And so she was there for like, just kickboxing and fitness, just kind of hang out. Um, I met her in the gym. She's like, Hey, do you want to spar with me? And I was a professional getting ready for a fight. And I'm like, sure. Why not? Uh, the bell rang and I Superman punched her straight in the face. Not super hard, but she wasn't happy with it. Yeah. So we we call, we call that love at first punch. Um, <laughs> but but she knew what she knew who I was and what I was doing, and I I told her like the first day like hey this is this is what I want to do, and if that's a problem tell me now because we'll just end this now like that's just that's just this is who I am this is what I'm gonna do so regardless of what happens if you stick with me that's fantastic if you don't sorry yeah. Um, but no, she's super supportive. She understands it. Uh, obviously, gets super nervous. It's hard to watch. It's it's hard for me to watch my friends fight. Like when I corner them, or I watch you know my coach fight, or watch my friends fight. 
it's super nerve wracking because you can't control it. You can't help them. You're just, you know, it's, yeah. they're by themselves in, in a sense. Uh, my family's super supportive. They, 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 uh, they love me fighting. They don't love me fighting, but they love the fact that I that love, you love it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's great. Yeah. That's great. Well, it's really cool that you have, have gone from that 22 year old cocky kid to the big leagues and I'm really yeah. proud to know you. Glad to see you at the gyms in the morning and I'm appreciate glad that, that you, you built that place so I can get a good workout in. I appreciate that. Yeah. I want to end with uh, five rapid fire questions That's and um, see if you can inspire us all a little bit more. Uh, okay. First one. What's your favorite quote? Nobody cares. Work harder. Nobody cares. Work harder. Yep. I like it. I like it. All I right. Got, so I have a shirt that, I have a shirt that says it. <laughs> say that again. I have a shirt that says it. Oh yeah. Nobody cares. Work harder. I love it. I love it. All right. So it's game day. You're getting ready for your fight. What song are you playing to get pumped up? So I get a walkout song every time I walk out of the cage. Uh, it's always mood based. This time it was 50 Cent Hustler Ambition. Yeah. Yeah. I love it. I mean, I know your style just from the gym in the morning. And you got good taste in the music. Yep. What can I say? Um, okay, the accomplishment that you're most proud of. Last fight, UFC win. Can't can't beat that one. That's amazing. That's amazing. Okay, two things on your bucket list that you have let yet to accomplish. Ooh, good question. Uh, I want to go to Hawaii, which I will get that done. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'd like to make hundred thousand dollars off my business by itself. Okay, those are two goals. They're pretty easy to plan. You can achieve those. I, yeah. I will accomplish those. I love those, it. I will accomplish those. All right. Finish my sentence for me. This is our last question. I'm most inspired by? Uh, people at Glory MMA and Fitness. They're, uh, I'm in there day in, out, day, day in, day out with them. Uh, James Krause, the head coach, who's a very inspirational per person in itself. But to watch people do the same thing, like the same journey that I've had, to watch them put in the work, to watch them grind every single day, it's, it's inspiring itself just, just to watch that every single day. That's amazing. It's amazing. Jason, I am so thankful that you joined us on Ready, Set, Grow today. Um, if, there's, if there's one thought you could leave us with, what would it be? Consistency is key on anything in life. Regardless of if, if it hurts, if it sucks, just keep pushing, keep sticking to it. Eventually it'll pay off. And I'm, I, I'm promise you I'm living proof of that. That's great. That's great. Well, everybody, thank you so much for joining us on this episode of Ready, Set, Grow with Jason Witt. Now it's time for you to go out there and grow yourself. The Ready, Set, Grow podcast with Trish Reedy.